Hey guys, George here. In this video, I would like to share to you what I achieved while exploring the basics of reading an input and writing to an output using MicroPython language in Raspberry Pi Pico development board. What I have here is a Raspberry Pi Pico attached to a set of LEDs, which is an output, and a set of buttons, which is an input. For your reference, the circuit diagram that is in here is available in my blog post at techtotinker.blogspot.com. So this is the second tutorial for Raspberry Pi Pico GPIO MicroPython. And in here is the circuit diagram. The goal is to display the value of a variable counter using these LEDs. And by using these buttons, to increase or decrease the value of the counter. I arranged the LEDs to represent a binary coded decimal or BCD where the left hand side, which is in my case the red LED, represents the most significant bit while the right hand side, which is the white LED, represents the least significant bit so that this white LED represents a value of 1, this is a value of 2, this is 4, this is 8, and 16 for the red LED. Using these 5 LEDs, we can represent a value of 0 where all LEDs are off to a value of 31 where all LEDs are on. Now let's see how it works in actual. By the way, I prepare three examples for the GPIO exploration, which is this one, the BCD on LED, and I also prepare a bonus for a Knight Rider display using these LEDs. So for GPIO BCD on LED, let me click the run current script. And I can increment the counter and display it in the LED by pressing this third button. I will press. So the value now is 1. I will increase 2. This becomes 3. This is 4. This is 5. And 6. And so on. We can decrement the counter value by pressing the first button, which is this one to decrease or decrement the counter by 1. So now the current count is 6 and you can also observe it in the shell of, of the Tony IDE. So I will press the first button to decrement the counter and the count becomes 5 and also 5 here in the LEDs which is 4 plus 1. We can decrement again. It will become 4. 3, 2, 1, 0. Now, let me increment this one to demonstrate the second button, which in the middle. So, the purpose of the second button is to reset the value of the counter. So, I will press this one, and it will reset the value of the counter to 0. Now, let me briefly discuss the source code. So the source code is simple. In the main loop, the program works by continuously checking the state of the buttons using these if statements. If switch A is pressed using this if statement, which is this button, the first button, it will decrement the value of the counter variable using this one. Switch C is check also, which is this button, the third button, which increments the value of the counter variable by 1. While switch B, which is the button switch in the middle, resets the counter to 0. Notice the condition checking for the counter variable in increasing or decreasing. 
this one and this one this is to prevent the counter from going outside the range of value that we can display on the LED we can only represent the counter value in the LEDs from 0 to 31 now if the counter is modified which is checked by this if statement if the counter value is not the same as in the previous value we can process it by converting the integer value of the counter to the equivalent BCD using this function. Then set the states of the LEDs accordingly. This if statement prevents unnecessary processing when the counter variable is not changed. Now to display the value of the counter to the LED, we cannot simply do that because the counter is an integer in a decimal numeric system while the LEDs are arranged in a binary-like numeric system through tuples which functions similar to an array to easily access its LEDs as you can see here these are LEDs white, yellow, blue, green, and red I know there is a better way to achieve this, but this solution is what I come up. I would like to hear your thoughts. Please write your ideas in the comment section. I created this function to convert an integer to BCD, which receives two parameters, which is the number of bits and the integer to be converted. Bits is the number of LEDs you use to represent the value of the counter. In my case, it's 5. The other parameter is the integer value. This is the value you want to convert into the binary coded decimal, which is in our case, the counter value. Now, in order to get the binary equivalent of the integer, we iterate on its bit position using the for loop. Starting from highest, which is number of bits minus 1 down to 0 position by dividing the integer value to the 2 to the exponent power of the current bit position and save the results to the BCD array of the current bit position we also need to get the remainder using the modulus division this remainder value will be used for the next loop iteration as you can see, we use the integer variable to hold remainder value using the modulus division. And lastly, we use a debug print using the REPL to print the binary equivalent of the specific bit position and the remainder value of the integer. Now that we have the BCD equivalent of the counter, we can now set the LEDs by copying the tuples by iteration i used a debug print of the current value of the counter for easy reference then we save the current counter value as previous counter and lastly i created 250 milliseconds delay to prevent false reading the state of the buttons as a summary we can increment using the third button while the first button decrements the counter and the middle button resets the counter to zero. As a bonus, I have here a two sample source code for Knight Rider. The first example is a simple implementation of it, while the other one Focus on a much smooth transition. So let me select the Knight Rider version 1 and click the run current script. And as you can see, it demonstrates a Knight Rider. Let me stop it and 
select the version 2 and click the run current script. So this one is a lot smoother because of additional code. So yeah, I hope you learned something from this. And as always, all the details here is posted at techtotinker.blogspot.com. Please write your thoughts and concerns in the comment section. If you find this helpful, please give me thumbs up and share this to your friends. Please don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell because I will be uploading more videos like this in the future. Thank you and have a good days ahead. See you next time. God bless.